All right, so uh, we're going to start now to make our game. And the great thing about Adobe Animate is that it can let you make movies, uh, drawings, uh, and also uh, games. So um, if you worked on uh, you know, the previous assignments, you saw one aspect of Adobe Animate. Now it's time to look at another aspect, a very powerful one, and honestly a complicated one, because it's going to be all about coding. So again, uh, whatever else you're doing, uh, please stop that and let's continue with the lecture at this point because you don't want to fall behind. And at any point, if you need help, call me over or Ben over and we'll keep you on track. So the first thing we want to do right here is uh, from the welcome screen here, let's pick right here where it says Air uh, for Android. And again, we're going to first focus on an Android game and it can be converted over to iOS or to devices on the desktop later but we'll go with Air for Android click on that and um, we get a vertical game board game area um, the game that I want to do here I want to do it landscape I want it sideways so that when uh, I have the wide uh, size of the tablet to work with so right now, the properties of my game over here show that it's 480 by uh, 800. So we want to switch those around. And I'm surprised there's no simple button that you can just click to switch them around. But let's change the properties of our game over here to 800 by 480. That'll give us a landscape-oriented uh, game. So 800 by 480. And it's going to be useful to select fit in window uh, unless uh, you're zoomed in or zoomed out. So fit in window. We'll do a save as. Let's save our project. I'm going to save it to my flash drive. Let's save it into a folder called Project 3. So in my flash drive, new folder, Project 3. And your file name, let's call it Project, let's call it your last name, Project 3. This is like the usual, we'll, uh, we'll have a, a project file with your name, so I know who to give the A plus to, so make sure your name is on that. Uh, so put your last name, dash project three, save that. Um, let's just draw like last time, just to make sure this all works. Just gonna draw a quick happy face. Uh, I just wanna be able to see that I, I can see this on my device. Obviously, if I can't see this on the device, that's not good at all, then I, I can't proceed at all from what I'm about to do. So just draw some sort of happy face. Don't get too complex. You don't have to give it a top hat or anything like me. Let's just draw something. And we did this once last week. We're going to do this again. Every time we start a new project, we have to set up a couple of things. And then for the actual assignment, um, you'll need to set this up. So somewhere there was a screen where we needed to edit the properties of this game. Does anyone remember where that screen was? Yes, file menu and then air for Android settings. So close, publish settings, but uh, technically the publish settings for the Android project. So let's go to file menu, air for Android settings. All right, so from this screen here, we will see your, the name of your file, .apk, leave that alone. Your app name, well, that's the name that's going to appear as the icon uh, right below. I mean, that's the name that's going to appear, that's going to be the text of your icon when it gets installed. You probably don't want your app to be called whatever that is. So you can call, you might not have the idea just yet, but let's, I'm going to call this Tap Frenzy. You can change this at any point, but this is going to be the name of my, um, the name of my game. 
Different people have different names for these things, and you'll able you'll be able to change them no problem. But let's just choose an app name right here. App ID, we can leave this alone for the moment. Version 1.0, leave that alone for the moment. Uh, okay, cool. Are we done with this screen? Um, aspect ratio, do we want to change that or not? Exactly. We're saying let's show our game as a portrait. But no, we're going with landscape. So we'll go with landscape aspect ratio. Set that to landscape. Um, you don't need full screen audio orientation and CPU. So that's the only thing we needed to change here at the moment. The name of your game. The name of the game is right there on the app name and landscape. So those, those are two important things to set there. Uh, let's jump over to languages. I'm going to set that to English. You can set it to other languages if you want. So language tab English. Permissions. Let's set internet access. If we want our game to access the um, uh, internet, uh, you know, the web, we've got it there. Icons. Make a plan that eventually you're going to design icons for your game. Right now they're very generic. And I'm going to put all of the requirements of what the game will be and remind you what is necessary. But in the uh, think for the moment here that eventually you're gonna make icons for this app so nothing to do here but uh, you see that it'd be pretty straightforward to set this up eventually I would make an icon in Photoshop or Adobe animate of 36 pixels sized and then I I would select it there and it would attach I would want uh, icons for all of those six sizes we can't do it at the moment that's okay we'll get back to it deployment this is the part here where then we have um, the part of this certificate. When we s did this the first time last week, we created a certificate. Now, how many of you still have your certificate file from that time? OK, good. If you still have it, we will use it. If you don't have it, we'll just create another one right now. So if you don't have your certificate file, let's click Create right here. Remember this. We're going to fill in this information here. Publish your name, the name of your app. Studio, so I'm just gonna call this Smith Apps LLC, whatever. Organization unit is what is your uh, what is your job title in the in the company? I'll just say uh, programmer or developer, app guru, whatever you want to call yourself. Uh, organization oops I did it again I did it backwards uh, your name goes first sorry about that and then your organization goes under organization name that makes sense sorry about that so I did it again uh, your name first what is your title and then your uh, company name so you make up a password here Any kind of password will work, but a more secure one is preferred, of course. And then you're going to go here on your Save As. Under the little box to Save As, you're going to click Browse, and you're going to save this file to your flash drive. Save it to the same folder as your project folder. You can, call, you can leave it with the name that it's suggesting you. That's fine. Or you can change its name um, versus anything else. But you're going to save this .p12 file. Click Save on that. Click OK on this uh, self-signing certificate screen. It'll take a moment, and then it'll um, tell you it's created the file. So click OK. Now, obviously, if you already had this from last time, all you need to do is browse to find your p12 file and let's all type the password to our p12 file and click remember
I think this is the part where it was different for different people. Uh, you want to make sure your Android development type here is set to device. You want to set... Let's see what happened here. Okay, you want to set then your um, air, t uh, air runtime embedded. And then here, it may be turned off. You want to turn on install application on the connected Android device. If, if that little check mark is not on, turn it on. And then it should scan and see your device, whatever serial number yours has. You want to turn on launch app and then also select your particular device. If that's not showing up there, uh, call us over. We'll, we'll fix that in a moment. Uh, but if all of that looks like mine, then you want to click Publish down here, and then wait a moment for it to uh, connect to your device. Now, I'm getting a failure here, so let's see what's going on on mine first, and then I'll help you just a moment. So what could be happening here, the way I would try to fix this is I would maybe click just OK on that. And then I would uh, unplug my device, wait a moment, then plug it back in. So sometimes this happens, it kind of forgets your device or something. So mine popped up and says, are you sure you want to connect? I'll say yes. So say OK on that. And then I'll go back to my Android settings. Deployment, maybe refresh it. And then it popped up there. And then I'll try publish again. Okay, that seems to do it. So sometimes it's just weird. You have to do the same thing. Unplug it, replug it, refresh it, and then try it. And I guess it'll behave. Okay. It's still keeping my name. Just keep the password. It also looks like the allowed US password.
So it looks like we're ready to go. Uh, everyone's uh, tablet seems to be working. Um, for future, I, I guess it'd be okay. Uh, it seems to work either. We've got, I forgot to say, we've got like the seven inch tablet and we've also got like a 10 inch tablet. So I guess whatever size you want to use is fine. I'm going with the seven inch one, but they should all be the same, I guess. Okay, so at the very least, I've got my, my face there. Okay, well now it's time to actually do something because this was just a test to see if we're able to communicate between Adobe Animate and our uh, tablet. So I'm going to click OK. And this masterpiece that we drew here, go ahead and delete it. All right, so um, this um, we're going to deal with a variety of different uh, screens in our project. The big idea is that we're going to have like an intro screen that shows you the name of the app. From that point, you can then uh, choose to play right away or choose a help screen. How do I play? So we're going to have this home screen. We're going to have a help screen. The actual game then will be at least one level of these little things running around and you tap them and you get points. Okay, so that's a third screen. I want to do also a boss screen, like a big bad guy is coming at you. You have to tap it, you have to kill it, you get points. Okay, that's four screens there. And then finally, okay, you either succeed or you fail, right? You either get the high score or you get killed. So there's going to be a couple of screens there, a game over screen uh, to play again or a game over to, to quit. So there's going to be different screens for us to look at. And those are all going to be scenes. So let's go to the window menu and select our scenes panel. Scenes panel. We've currently got a scene one. Um, going to uh, create, let's do five, five scenes. So click on that little icon there to create new scenes. And it's not good to have these named as generically scene one, two, three. I'm going to lose track of what they are. So here's what we'll do. We'll call each of them. Uh, so you can double click to rename scene one. Let's see, we'll call this one scene, uh, or actually scene zero title. I'm going to have like a scene zero in terms of this is the title screen. This is the name of my app, the title of my app. That's a zero, scene zero. Let's change our scene two to be called scene zero help. Now, the spelling of these does matter. I've got a capital T for title and a capital H for help. So when we write our code, it does matter 100% that these are named properly as I've got them named here. This is going to be a cause of errors early on for people. What did I name it? How did I title it? Capital letter? No capital letter. But as we do this, we get practice with doing it right. Um, I want to have then the actual first level of the game. We'll call this S1. 
um, level one. So you see each of these S's, they mean scene. These things can be called anything you want, of course. But what makes sense to me is to have them prefixed S1, S2, S9, whatever. Scene 0, scene 1, scene 12, whatever. And then the, a, a, a fuller name after that. You could call this something like S1, level 1, space easy. But I don't recommend you use spaces on these things. That's the point of putting the capital letters. So just super simple here, S1, level 1. We're going to have one level to start off with. Um, then we're going to have a boss level. So we'll call that S1 boss. So then at the very end, you've got a game over screen. Uh, either you got the high score, you died, etc. So we'll call that um, S2 N. So we have these five different scenes. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. We've got five different scenes. They've all got a unique name. We're going to draw some simple stuff in scene one, first of all. Um, the as we do the lecture, it's going to look it's going to look very simple. We're going to focus much more on the coding of it. So the big idea of then the assignment will be, OK, your code's going to need to work, number one. And number two, you're going to put your own graphics, your own sound, your own text. So at the very least, to start off with, uh, on our title screen here, I just, I'm just going to write the name of the game. Uh, totally simple. This will be Tap Frenzy. So make sure you're in the, yes, that's a good point. Uh, be careful here. I'm writing in the wrong scene. You want to make sure you're on scene zero title. So that's easy to lose track of. Make sure you've selected scene zero title. And we'll write the name of our game. Again, you don't have to be that fancy at the moment. We, You will focus on the graphics of it later. I want to create um, a couple of circular buttons. Where we can then just, again, super simple, have uh, a button to start and a button for help. Obviously, in your version of the game, you're going to have a cool background. I'm going to talk about adding music, of course. Uh, but there's going to be some sort of title screen here where uh, you'll have the name of your app and then the two main options of start the game or help. How does the game work? So obviously, in, in a moment, we'll set it up that when you click Start, it'll jump us to S1 Level 1 scene. It'll take us over to our level one scene where we'll start tapping frenzily. Or if we click help, it's going to jump us over to S0 help. And stuff will happen there. How to play the game, the, the values of points, whatever, whatever you want to say. Before any of that coding will work, well, let's um, select your first button here, so select it completely. What I did also, I forgot to say, but I filled in the color, uh, right? I, I typed, I filled in color into my circles, and that'll be because when you make these buttons, anything that is not filled in with a color is actually transparent. So if I didn't have a color here, and I try to click on it in that empty area, it's not going to register as a click. So you want to make sure your buttons have filled in with a color. 
I have written start in, in white, which is a color, but this background, remember, is not a color. So actually, before we do anything, just to make sure about this, change your background color. Remember how I recommended a gray background color really helps you to differentiate what is invisible and what is actually colored white? So just set that to a gray. Now I can confirm here. So this is what I was saying a moment ago. Um, that button there has, an, has invisible parts, whereas it's got text. If a person tries to click right here, it's invisible. It's not going to register a hit. So with the gray background, that helps us differentiate that. OK, now we'll select our button. We need to turn this into a symbol. How do we turn this into a symbol? Keyboard shortcut, anyone remember? F8, good. Press F8 on that. You can also right click it and select um, convert to symbol. <clears throat> so um, the name of this, let's make sure it's a type of a movie clip as we have here. Registration point, I'm going to set it in the center. So if we wanted to rotate this object and such, it will rotate from the center. The name of this we will call MC Start. So this object we're turning into a symbol. It's a movie clip symbol, so MC. This is our button for uh, starting the game, MC Start. Do the same thing for the Help button, and we'll call it MC Help. So after you click OK on that, select Help, F8. Make sure it's of type movie clip. Registration in the is in the center, MC Help. Okay, so now we've got two objects, two movie clips. We want to give each of these an instance name so that we can write some action script code so that they actually do something. Question over here? All right, so this um, object needs an instance name. Go ahead with your select uh, selection tool. Uh, click on the first one, uh, select, just click once uh, to select the start button. And then on the top right corner uh, on our properties here, this needs an instance name. I'm going to call this btn um, start. The name of the object in my library is mc start because it's a movie clip. And again, these names are completely arbitrary. You can call these things kitty cat, and they'll work just fine. But the logic of this, so type that, then press Enter. The logic of this is that in my library, things that are movie clips start with MC. Things that are um, other kinds of objects will start, when we deal with like a text scrolling box, it'll be TXT. But the objects in the library will have a prefix of what they are. In the properties, then, it's also got a name. But here, this one's important when we deal with the action script. And when I'm looking at hundreds of lines of action script, um, looking at even the names of these objects is very helpful, because this tells me this is a button. I'm supposed to click on it, and something happens. We're going to do the exact same thing for help. What do you think we're going to call this? Perfect. BTN help. And remember, type it, then press Enter. A lot of times there's an error here because people don't press uh, don't press enter to enter the the name that you typed. Mm. 
Okay, so I'm going to save what I have here. Let's jump over to our help screen. And then here, um, this would be instructions about how to play. So just like very quickly, uh, I'm going to write something like need help. Tap everything. for massive damage. So obviously something more complex is what I will be expecting when you make yours. At the moment, again, you don't have to worry too much about making it amazing right now. That's going to take way too much time. Focus on creating the various screens that we'll talk about, the basic graphics of it all. The most important thing at the moment during these lectures will be the code then you'll have time to do the, um, the visuals of it at your own pace. So from here, um, this would be some sort of help info. From here, I want to go back to, the, uh, back to the home screen, back to the title screen. So I'll create again another quick, simple button to take me back home. So just a little circular button, drop in a color. And then I'll title it Home. This button will take me back home. Okay, let's go to scene one, level one, S1, level one. And let's not get too complex here. Let's just draw one, one thing. Let's say I'm going to be zapping ghosts. For some reason, ghosts have invaded our mortal plane, and we're going to need did, to zap them. Did we convert that button or to a symbol We didn't, but we will. We don't quite need to do it yet. But that's a good point there. Did you notice we didn't create that, we didn't convert that visual button into an actual button? We will, but let's just put some of these visuals into our different scenes first. So let's go over to scene one, level one, and just draw one little bad guy thing that you're going to be zapping. Now again, ideally, this game is going to be based on what you've done previously in the class. Uh, the model sheet, the movie that has various um, assets of what your game previously was. I, I, I don't know, I'm doing like a space space quest. My, my space warrior is going to go find gems, whatever. So maybe I'm blasting like little ghosts in the haunted palace or something. I don't know. I've got to think about it. But just create some little graphic here of a little bad guy. Um, don't have to get very complex. And... Um, then we're going to do the same thing for then the uh, the boss level. So just going to put something like that. Don't worry about making it too complex just yet. Don't worry about making it a symbol or anything like that. We don't have to worry about just that yet. We're we're kind of setting ourselves up the basic aspect of things. Okay, boss level. So I'm going to make some sort of big boss, big boss evil guy. Doesn't look evil enough. OK, I'll make it more evil. Here we go. So again, uh, we're not turning it into a symbol or anything just yet. Just creating some visual things. We're 
putting some content in each of the scenes. For the moment, our final scene, scene to end. Um, we'll write a quick message, game over, and then a couple of buttons, play again or quit. So let's go to scene to end. Game over. And then two buttons there for restarting the game or quitting. These will need to be turned into symbols eventually, uh, but for the moment, start over and quit. into scene zero for your title screen, scene one, level one for the first level. All of these buttons that we create will eventually need um, to be turned into symbols, we'll get to that. Okay, this is my. Um, this is, uh, I'm going to go back to scene zero. Cool. This is the title of my of my game. I've got my tablet plugged in. Um, I want to load up what I currently have in the tablet. So what I what I like to do. Uh, beforehand is on the tablet I like to go home you know just to kind of close the app for the moment and uh, we need to publish this back or compile it over to our device so make sure you've saved this project so far so remember to hit control F, control s every once in a while to save your work go back to scene zero title file save and let's go then to file air for Android Let's go to the deployment tab. Uh, the deploy deployment tab. Everything looks good there. It knows my certificate. It knows my password. It sees my device. I'll publish. Now I, I said last time. Sometimes uh, you're going to get a message on the screen here that says that gives you like a little warning message, but the 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 game does appear on your device. So I'm not sure why some of you might get that message on screen, but you see your device, so that's good. So go ahead and load it up on your device and let's see what happens. What happens? An endless loop, exactly. That was a trick question. You got it. So if we test it right now, yes, it's just going to do an endless loop of all of our screens. That was on purpose. We have these different screens, these different scenes, and each one exists independently. So we're going to need to add coding to control that. Let me just load mine up to confirm it's there. So just one moment. Okay, here it comes right here. Okay, there we go. So I'm, uh, I've got mine loaded up here on my device. I get the message again, but I'm going to ignore it. So there's my game there. It's very, very, very frenzied. So, okay, the big idea here that's happening is it's doing exactly what we told it. We're saying play this project in the device. And it plays scene one, frame one, and then it goes to scene two, frame one, and then scene three, frame one, and scene four just as fast as it can, 24 frames per second. So I'm going to... I'm going to uh, click the little home button before I pass out on that. And I'm going to go back to Adobe Animate. OK, so what we need to do here is we need to start introducing ActionScript. ActionScript will let us control the flow 
of the movie. Because right now it starts from scene zero and goes to scene two and goes to the end. So guys, you have a question there? You guys keep talking. Do you have any question? If you've got a question, remember to raise your hand. And if you're just talking and uh, not paying attention, please pay attention. So the, the part now that we need to start working with is action script, which is the coding. Let's make a brand new layer on scene zero, title. Uh, brand new layer, let's call it Actions. So double click to change the name of that layer to Actions. We're going to open up the Actions panel. We're going to start to write a little code. The most basic code that we often start with is stop. Right? Don't play this automatically frame by frame by frame by frame. We want to stop and look at and interact with the different screens. So you've got a brand new layer, Actions. Uh, make sure you've selected then that frame. And then uh, you can right click and select Actions, which is the same as pressing F9 on the keyboard. Open up our Actions panel. And here I would recommend to kind of uh, move your panel around and maybe resize it and such just to give you the best, uh, your best look at your project as well as your code. This is going to overlap and it's going to be annoying sometimes. And uh, so anyway, I've got this panel open and the first thing I will write is stop. This is our very first action script command here. Notice how we write this with, um, it's all lowercase. You've got this open and close parentheses. That's shift 9 and shift 0. And then semicolon. So this command will stop the action at this point. We're going to write a, a lot of code, and it'd be very useful to also give ourselves comments uh, about how what we're doing here. So actually, before stop, give yourself a new line before stop. You'll write two slashes and then a space. We'll write our first command. Stops the movie at this point. Stops the game at this point. So I'm not going to do it, but if I were to now play the game, um, it would stop on the first frame. And sometimes it'll be better to just go to control test instead of trying to run it off of your device. It takes a little while for it to load up on the device. Sometimes close enough. Let's try it here, control test. That should open up a simulation of it to quickly see it. And it's supposed to then have this See, mine crashed already for some reason. Um, I'm going to try that again. Yeah, if your screen suddenly closes like that, like mine, it, it crashed. Uh, but it's supposed to have then the simulator here on the left side where you can select various aspects. This is not quite behaving here. So good thing I've got a real device. But at the very least here, OK, I'm seeing my first screen. If I didn't have the stop command, it would just be playing super fast. Uh, you'll have to right-click it on this taskbar and select Close Window. So maybe that that control test won't be that useful for us. So we'll have to be keep doing the file uh, Android settings. Anyway, um, at this point, uh, again, I'm not going to run it because it takes a moment. But this should stop your game from uh, going, you know, from freaking out all the way across. Next lines of code here. I'm going to say activate, two slashes to, to add a comment. Activate the touch features of our app. Right now, Adobe Animate doesn't quite know 
that you want to use it on a, on a tablet. And tablets, of course, you tap on them instead of clicking with a mouse. So we're going to write some code that activates and allows us to use the features of tapping on a device. So we're going to say import space flash. You may get these pop-ups here that help you write your code. You can ignore them for the moment, but later on, these pop-ups that happen will be useful if I want to type a code a little faster. But just ignore them for the moment. Dot events. Dot touch. And I'm starting to write that with a capital T. Like 99% of the code we're going to write is going to be lowercase. There's going to be some instances where it is uppercase, and it's very important that the case is correct. Touch event semicolon. So the purpose of this command is to activate the features of touch. We're saying let's import touch events. Next line, enter. Uh, related to that, we will say multi touch, capital, e, capital M, multi touch dot input mode equals. Oops, uh, input mode, capital M. Notice the colors of our code. When you um, program in most languages, it's going to have different colors because of different um, aspects of the language. One color might mean one thing, one color means another. So if your colors don't quite look the same as mine, that's an indicator that you might not have typed something properly. So if I did it like this, notice my input mode is black and it should have been blue. So this is the problem with, with coding, that if you're not careful of the little details, one little detail becomes a big problem. So make sure it looks like that. Multi, capital M, touch, input, capital I, mode, capital M, dot, and then in all capital let letters, touch, underscore, point. Press Enter a couple of times and save it. Okay, so again, let's let's pause here and let's let's think here. Up until this point, we've been using Adobe Animate in a very visual multimedia way. What you see is what you get. You draw a line, it's a line. You draw some lines, it's a face. Now we're looking at this aspect of Adobe Animate where it's coding, it's programming. And what you see here isn't exactly what you see on screen right mm -hmm. away. Simply here, what we're saying, for example, is let's stop the movie so that it doesn't freak out and play every single frame. Then we're saying, let's activate the ability to be able to touch on the screen to, to do stuff. And this is a, a big culture shock that I see for students taking this class. You've had a lot of experience in CIS-125 very graphically and visually and sound-wise, and we had some for the last few weeks. But then now we're shifting to a lot more of this coding. And it's OK if you feel that it's weird or complex or hard or you hate it. Um, you'll eventually love it, I hope, because this helps you create uh, powerful interaction and make your things do something, not just, you know, exist and play on their own. But it is important to, if you feel that you're falling behind, let, let us know right away. Remember, raise your hand. We'll help you out right away so you don't fall behind. Okay. I want the ability to tap the Start button, and then it's going to take, or actually let's do help first. I want the ability to click the help button and it's going to take me to the help screen. So that means that uh, I need to uh, reference that button and then write some code for it. So that button, well, let's write our comment here. This, these comments are just notes for ourselves. When you tap the button, when you tap the help button, When you tap the help button, take us to the help scene. 
which is called uh, S0 help. So anything with that double slash at the beginning is a comment. It is not read by the device. It is not used. It's just a comment. And you can write as many comments as you want. And I highly recommend to give yourself comments, especially when you're new to this. Like, what did that code do? I think it does this. I'll write a comment. Or I'll write a comment saying, don't forget to fix this later on. Well, we're going to write the name of the, of the button. The name of the button is the instance name, btn help. Dot add event capital E listener open close parentheses so the human readable thing what we want to do is you tap a button you go to a screen the machine readable part is the command add event listener what this is saying is let's listen for let's wait for something the something is gonna be a tap a tap on a button so here's our button Right in the code, here's our button. Visually, here's our button. But in the code, here's our button, btn help. And we're waiting for the event. Listen for the event, and then do something. Uh, in the parentheses, we say what kind of event and what to do. We'll say touch event, capital T, capital E, touch event, dot touch underscore tap so we're saying let's wait let's listen for someone tapping this button comma I'm still inside of the parentheses I've added a comma and then a space fn go FN capital G go game capital G start so in human speak tap the help button go to help scene in computer scene uh, speak um, add the event listener method to the BTN help object Uh, listening for a touch tap then run the function fn go game start I think we're doing the help button first. what's that would that be go game help because we're going to go to the help button with this one or is start going to become this one oh oh yes 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 i'm getting ahead of myself uh sorry about that uh, not uh, not game start yes function go help very good very good point there ten ten points you get ten victor points uh, one thousand then equals one real point okay sorry about that let's let's change that uh, good point there we're trying to set up our help button whoops I was then sa saying for that to go to the start of the game nope that's not what I want. Uh, we're pressing the help button to go to the help screen. Function go help. Again, these, I'll explain what a function is in a moment. But this that is black, this is not built in action script code. Stop was blue, import was purple, touch type was blue, but btn help and function fn go help are, are black. These are pieces of code that we're inventing. We drew a button called help, and we gave it an instance name called btn help. And after clicking btn help will take us to a function that will then take us to the screen of help. So we're making up this code here. And we can call it whatever we want. But I'm calling it fn go help, because it's a function 
that will take us somewhere. It will go to the help scene. Okay, next line. Um, comment here, double slash, create a function that's clicked, I mean that's run after tapping the help button. So you would think, okay, I'm going to click the help button and it's going to go to the help screen, the end. We're going to see actually that a lot of times something seemingly logically simple takes up several lines of code. And that's because computers are dumb. We have to tell them exactly what we want. For me, I want it to go from the title screen to the help screen and play a sound. Well, that's two or three different things that I have to tell the computer to do. So I have to sometimes be very verbose. I have to be very wordy and tell it exactly what I want. So this is what we're saying here. Wait for a button to be clicked. Uh, wait for it to be tapped. Then run a function. Call function go. Help. Well, I have to invent. What does that mean? What is a function go help? So we're going to define it right here. We're going to say function space. Notice that becomes a color, purple. Fn go help. Open close parentheses. Space. Open close curly brace. Now it looks a little weird on my projector there, but those are curly braces. Those are the ones right next to the P. Right next to the P, we've got brackets, square brackets, and then shift bracket gives you a curly brace. So between the P and the backspace, we've got brackets. We want curly brackets or curly braces. So we're setting up here what does it mean when we want when we want to run the command fn go help that doesn't exist in the list of 200 commands of action script fn go help doesn't exist we're defining it so we're creating a function that's run after tapping help button inside the parentheses here we say event colon Again, these pop-ups that happen here might be useful because I want a touch event and I could scroll down to try to find T for touch or as I start typing T, it'll jump down to the T's and if you find then touch event, you can just double click it and that'll help you finish typing it. If you don't want that pop-up to help you, you can press escape to cancel it. After the parenthesis, then we want colon void. Some of these things in the coding are just this is the way it is. You have to write function, you have to write event, you have to write void. Most of the things that are in a certain color, it's just the way it is. You just memorize it, you just practice it, you just learn it. Besides that, everything that's black, if we invent it, well, we define the rules of it. I'm calling this thing fn go help. I'm calling this thing btn help. Between the curly braces, I'm going to press enter a couple of times to break it into separate lines. And you see how there's a red line connecting, li in my case, line 14 with line 16. If your line numbers don't line up, that's OK. But on my line 14 and 16, there's a red line connecting the two because this curly brace started back here under line 14. At the end of this curly brace here, we'll write a comment. We will say end fn go help. When you've got dozens or hundreds or thousands of lines of code, you can lose track of things very easily. And so the um, notes that you write yourself are very useful. I'm going to lose track of If I've got so many lines of code like this on, on this thing, and I look at that by itself, well, what does that mean? Where did it connect to? What was that? By adding this comment here, 
Oh, that's reminding me that this is the end of my function go help. Create a function that runs after tapping help button. We can then say a function is a collection of steps, aka code, grouped together. I guess that's redundant if I said collection and grouped, but uh, you get the idea there. Um, these are going to be various commands grouped together. I create a function to group commands together. I want it to check what my score is and play a sound and show a smiley face on screen, three different commands. I group them all together into one function and therefore I just run the function. I just execute the function. I just use the function like up here. There's a button. I'm waiting for a tap. Once it gets tapped, run this function. Here we go, run this function. What I want this to do is to finally take me to scene help. So the comment here, go to frame one of scene zero help. That's what I want, you know, in the human language, that's what I want. I want to go to the first frame of the help scene. Well, in the computer language, in this case action script, I have to say it like this. Movie, capital M, clip, capital C, open close parentheses, dot, thank you. Go to and capital A play capital P open close parentheses semicolon. I'm saying okay. Um, from the point I'm currently at, I want to go someplace else. The point I'm currently at is is in the parentheses of movie clip. Inside of the parentheses of movie clip, we'll say this dot root. Again, so usually the way I'm going to do the lecture is I'm going to I'm going to write the notes and explain it as a person, and then I'm going to write the code. Then I'm going to explain what the code is doing, so we get the three aspects of it. Inside of the go to and play, uh, in the in that command in the parentheses, we're going to say one, comma, and right here it might pop up might pop up to tell you when you use go to and play you want to have a frame comma and then a scene the name of the scene so you see again um, I have the whole app all I have all the code already ready I'm gonna be going through it with you and explaining it but if you don't know the code it often pops up to help you to give you hints and then of course I can go look it up on the official action script website I can go to YouTube and get tutorials I can get this information free everywhere I can get a book from the library so in quotes open quote end quote I'm gonna write the name of the scene what's the name of the scene where my help instructions are at let me take a peek over here. S0 help. S0 help, capital H. Yep. So in the quotes, S0, capital H help. All right, so. This is a good time to pause, to save, and to run it, and then to make sure our code works so far. Save your code. File, uh, Air for Android, Deployment, Publish. This is the part where we start to fix errors. This is the part to see, this is the part where we realize, oh, I misspelled this, I misspelled that.
Let me check it on mine. Let me just check my code works, and then we'll I'll pause to make sure your code works. So I had to I had to unplug and replug my tablet. Apparently, um, mine I don't know my thing my computer is weird here, so I I have to unplug it and replug it. I guess anyway. Here it comes. It's coming up. Great. So I've got my my app looks amazing. Tap frenzy. Cool. I'm gonna click help. What's going on? We didn't put stop on help. Exactly. So again, computers are dumb. I know exactly what I want. I want to click help and take me to help and read help. But what happened was, okay, we'll take you to help and we'll keep going. Then it plays scene two and three and four and five and back to scene one. That's why the first time this was looping infinitely because there was no stops. And then now when you click help, it shows you, it goes through. I, just, I think I saw the boss. I think it killed me. And then I'm back on S0 title. There's two ways to fix it. Two ways to fix it. If I look at the code I wrote on line 17, how do you think I might change line 17 to possibly fix it? Instead of and play something else? And stop. And stop. That could be one way. I won't do it that way, but that is correct. Another way to do this is go to and stop. Go to that scene and stop on that scene. Let's not do that because I think a better way is to actually stop the screen on that scene you know, explicitly. So that means we need to go over to our scene S0 help and add some action script to stop. Before we, st we write our code, of course, so let's go to uh, scene zero help. We need a new layer for actions, and then we can write our action script code to stop. So scene zero help, let's create a new layer, actions. Make sure you've selected frame one actions layer in the um, scene zero help. You can, uh, you can easily lose track of what screen am I at, where am I at. Well, on the top left corner, it'll tell you uh, I'm in scene zero help. In your scene panel, scene zero help. And then now, in the action script code, I'll write stop. On the side panel, it's going to start telling me uh, scene zero title has action script code in frame one. Scene zero help now has action script code Frame one. Actually, it's saying you've got a layer called actions, frame one, on scene zero help. And you've got a layer called actions, frame one, scene zero title. This is going to be a great tool for you to jump back and forth uh, between your code here. So now, if you save it and publish it, and you click help, it should jump you to help and stay there. So let's make sure that works, and then we'll go on. Anyone need a little help? Is it acting weird for right now? Just having
Yep, it's a capital C. So, um, try capital C, I'll be right back in a moment, publish it again, and see if that did.
All right, anyone else? Did you get that part working? Yep. All right, so let's go on. So again, this is an, an example of, okay, as the person, I know exactly what I want. I want to click on, uh, I want to click on this and do what I, what I told it. Uh, well, I had to be, uh, I had to tell it exactly what I wanted. So continuing here, what we're going to do is from the help screen, I want to set the help screen up to take me back to the title screen. Let's go to S0 help. This is the part then where we've got uh, our, uh, our content. Now, here's a tip that I would give. This panel is going to get in my way, and I need to see my stuff, and I'm going to close it, and blah, blah, blah. Here's what I like to do. If you double-click the tab of actions, it closes up really thin like that. And then you double-click it again, and it opens up. For me, I really like that because I just need to close it, do what I need to do on screen, and then open it up again right there. So in any event, what we need to do is we need to make this button work to take us back to title. Well, we need to do several things. It's not an object yet. It doesn't have an instance name. And there is no code that says to go back. So a lot about what coding is, whether it's ActionScript, JavaScript, uh, HTML, whatever, is a lot of repetition. So we need to do this again. Select your home button. So all the pieces of your home button, select it. F8 to convert it into a symbol. We will call this MC Home. This is MC Home. Movie clip type, again, registration centered. So if we needed to rotate, it'll rotate from the center. Click OK. This is a, a few people miss this, and that's OK because it's very easy to miss. We gave it a name for the library, but we need to then also give it a name as the instance name. So make sure you click it once to select it. And then instance name properties. This is then BTN home. And remember to press enter to enter that change. Okay, so I've got the, the little drawing, which is now a symbol, which has an instance name. That's one of the big errors you'll, you'll get, that your things don't have instance names. I'm going to then select my Actions layer, Frame 1, and then open Actions panel. I added the Stop command so that the game wouldn't automatically loop as soon as it went from Title to Home. So usually you're going to have a stop command right away on each on each scene so that it doesn't just freak out and play over and over, of course. We can use go to and stop, but we shouldn't rely on that because there could be other things that for some reason bypass go to and stop and then it keeps playing. So I think it's a lot safer to put a stop command that's more obvious. Stop us here. Okay, so we've stopped on the on the help screen. Well, we need to set up that button to wait to be clicked. Once it gets clicked, then take us home. So the same repetition. We need an event listener uh, uh, added upon the object, and we need a function then that takes us home. So the name of our object is btn home dot. We're, we're going to add an event listener, just like before. Parentheses, semicolon. Now I haven't fully mentioned it. But notice that almost every line of code that we write ends with a semicolon. That's our end of statement. We have a command, we're done, semicolon. So almost every line will end with a semicolon, except when I point it out. Inside of the add event listener, we say what kind of event we're listening for and what to do after that event. We've been using the tap event, but we've got other events, tap and drag, double tap. Tap with two fingers, pinch or unpinch. We have a bunch of different types of events to listen to. So the one of a simple tap 
is the one that goes uh, touch event with a capital T capital E dot capital T I mean fully capital touch underscore tap comma so I don't have them all memorized but something like this don't write this but it would be like double tap something like this but don't write it there is a variety of these events that are built in I'd have to look them up I don't have them memorized but here I would do something like that when I double tap something wait for this button to be double tapped to do something wait for it to be zoomed in to do something that's what an event listener is we're waiting for an event to happen in our case touch tap we will run a function function go home okay well we need to define what is the command fn go home so function space fn go home parentheses space curly braces semicolon So the language that we're writing in this class is ActionScript, which is a cousin of JavaScript. Does anyone have any experience in any JavaScript? A couple people. So if you have some experience in JavaScript, some of this will be familiar. There are event listeners in JavaScript. There are functions in JavaScript. Uh, so if you have experience in one language, it helps you in another language. Okay, inside a function, this is the part where it just has to be this way, and we get the practice. Event, colon, touch event, after the parenthesis, colon, void. A function could give back a result. Let's say I've got a function that calculates your birthday. It takes you know it calculates how old you are it takes your birth year and the current year it does a calculation and it returns it gives you back a value well this function is not giving back any value it's void um, we could have later on uh, let's run a function that does a calculation and it gives us back a number that's what that would be there but we don't have to worry about that yet so it's giving us back nothing it just does something these curly braces, I will break them, so press enter a couple of times, separate them like that. We're going to need to go back to scene title frame 1. We've done that already, so here's another practice again. Movie, clip, capital C, parentheses dot go to and capital A play capital P semicolon there's the go to and play again it could be go to and stop if we want we've already got a stop command on frame one title scene so from the current scene from the current button that we clicked on take us back to some other scene so again here movie clip this dot root this is basically saying for this particular button we clicked on in this particular scene go to and play frame one comma the name of the title scene which is what S zero title. S zero title in quotes and notice this is green if your uh, if your title here is not green like mine, that's partly telling you there's some kind of error. So, unfortunately, these colors don't activate to tell you there's an error. These colors activate you to kind of tell you what kind of thing is it, what kind of code is it. Um, like these greens are related to the names of your titles. Gray code is related to comments and so forth. 
So the point is, you don't have to know what the colors mean, you just need to know why is mine black but his is green? Why is his purple but mine is red? They just have to match up with what mine is. Okay, um, for the moment, this is all that we need for the help scene. Go ahead and save it and publish it and try it out. See from your home screen, click help. It goes to help. Read your help instructions. Click home to go back to home. Try that out on the tablet. If you have any trouble, call me over. I don't think there's a quick keyboard shortcut to deploy it to the device. Is there test movie? Wait a minute, maybe there is. Hmm. Actually, it looks like if you go to control test movie on device and choose your device. Let me confirm that. That might be a faster way than going to the publish screen. Let me just confirm that on mine. Let's see, something's happening. Okay, here we go. Tap Frenzy is up here. I click Help. I'm on my Help screen. It's not playing over and over. I click Home. Goes home. Well, here's a shortcut that might be helpful when you're testing this. I forgot about this, but if you look at um, if you look at your control menu and you hover over test movie and there's on device when you first activate control test movie on device and you select your device after that it will remember that you want to test on a device so then after that you can go to control test or control enter so you just have to tell it the first time I want to test a movie on a device after that control enter seems to publish it a lot faster than going to file menu publish Android and then click publish so does that work there anyone need a little help is it all kosher I think I found uh, how why it wasn't working to start with and the thing went. you have to explicitly turn on touch in the little circular thing touch it's a uh, I was trying to turn it on, but my SIM controller was not even in the cooker. Oh, wow. Okay, so my SIM was in the But that, that was the idea. I wanted to turn it on, but mine wasn't even in the cooker. I was like, I don't know. I'll call it. I'll call it.
All right, everyone, so let's go on here. Um, okay, so we're seeing how we're seeing how the the guys there, Matt, Cameron, we're seeing how the um, the code lets us navigate from screen to screen. Uh, now it's time to start to go to the main 
uh, part of the game where actually we're going to start to tap them and get points. So if we go back to scene zero, title, um, you've got the start and you've got help. Well, uh, we need to do something very similar to what we did with the start with the help button to the start button. So back to our actions layer and uh, scene zero title. This is the good thing about the code. Uh, one of the good things about the code is that it's very repetitive. One of the bad things is that it's very repetitive. So at some points it feels like I'm just doing the same thing over and over. Yes, but at least that's good because then if you do it right one time, it'll continue to be right. So we're going to need to set up an event listener for the button and then a function for it. Now, did we name, did we give it an instance name? Let's check that first. Select your start button. Uh, yeah, we did, I guess. So it's always good to confirm that. BTN start is the instance name for the start button. So in our action script, we'll start very similar, another event listener as before. So activate the start button to go to the uh, scene one level one. Now let's be careful here. Some of these characters I noticed look very, very tricky. The L and the one look exactly the same almost. So I'll obviously point it out. S1 level one. It does look more obvious over here on the panel, but in our code it looks almost exactly the same. So let's be careful about that. Next line, the name, the instance name of our button, BTN start, needs an event listener waiting for a touch tap, which will then run a function. That's easy. We've already done it two times. Add event listener, parentheses, semicolon. So even though obviously I know that we're going to write touch event dot tap comma f and help, I recommend when you write your code, if there's a pair of something, to open and close the pair and then fill in the stuff inside because you're going to lose track of it. Meaning, I could start writing the touch event function part and then I'm going to forget the parenthesis and then my code will break. This is why early on I say open close parentheses and then the semicolon. This needs a touch event waiting for a touch tap. After the tap, function go start. Or go, uh, we'll make it obvious, go level one. So, Again, we're making up this function, go level one, so we can call it whatever we want. I had in my notes, we're calling it go start. I think it makes more sense to call it go level one. That's where we're actually going. So we can change that, of course, because it's the code that we invent. And then we need to define what does that, we need to define what does that um, function actually mean. Just like when we defined go help, it needs the same thing. An event of touch event, colon void, and then basically movie clip, go to and play. So this is the repetition of it. And I do recommend as we go through the course, of course, to follow along with what I'm doing. But if you think you know what you're about to do, you can go ahead and do it. If it breaks, you can just undo it. But you should see where I'm going, so I wouldn't fault you if you went slightly ahead. Now what I would say here, break that apart, and fn go level 1. I don't think we did that on our help screen, right? It was an optional thing, but I recommend to add that end comment at the end of our functions. And we've got the same little piece of code as before. That's the general skeleton of it. Movie clip object dot go to and play method. This command is being used upon this object.
as we've seen uh, up on top, it's the same thing. This root, it's just the way it is. And then we specify frame one, comma, the name of the scene where we're trying to go to, in quotes, which is S1 level one. Now, obviously, if uh, we were to test it at this point, we'd have a problem because it would jump over to uh, level one screen and then quickly jump to boss screen and then go to help screen and stop there because we've got to stop. So we're going to need stop commands. Um, we might as well add them early on. Stop commands on uh, level one and a stop command on the boss level. We're going to need that eventually, so we might as well add it now, now that we know that that's going to happen. So let's go to scene one, level one, create an actions, uh, an actions layer, add the stop command. And then scene one, boss, do the same thing. Create an actions layer and then a stop command. So today we're going a little longer than the usual lab. We're going to do one or two more th little things, then we'll do our lab if you want to practice this and such. Uh, but we we can uh, create a pretty fun, interesting game with not a lot of coding. Um, I don't have the the number of the line number on this, but uh, this app right now that we're going to do together is about ten lines of co uh, ten pages of code. It's not a lot of code. Uh, let's say it's probably at the most a hundred lines of code. It's not that bad. There's other games, of course, with thousands of lines of code. And this is the thing, you don't need to know every action script command. I don't. I'm going to tell you that secret. I don't know every action script command. But I know where to look it up. I know what book to go to. I know what website or YouTube video to look at. I need to know a certain command, certain codes, to accomplish a certain task. Everything else, I don't need it. It's just taking up space in my mind that I would rather save it for other stuff. So. It's okay that you don't know every command, but you should know the commands that you have had experience with, and you should know then how to look up resources to find more info. Okay, what I want to do then in level one is this little ghost character. The idea of the game is, again, these things are going to run around, they're going to fly around, they're going to rotate, they're going to taunt you, whatever, and you're going to tap them and get points. So. You can have one flying around, 20 flying around, whatever. That's going to be the part of the creativity that you're going to uh, choose. We're going to have one at the moment. Uh, but then the game is that it's a tap frenzy. So if five of them are flying around, you're going to tap them and get them and get points. Some of them give you bonus points. Some of them give you minus points. The boss is going to come at you. It needs 50, 50 taps or it'll kill you. Or this time it needs 10 taps. So there'll be a lot of variation that you can do. But in the beginning, we'll have the, the basics. This needs to be turned into an object. It needs to be turned into a symbol. So select your little ghost, or whatever you drew. Turn it into a symbol, F8. And we'll call it MC, uh, let's say, uh, keep it generic, MC Sprite 1. Uh, maybe too generic. Well. You might have drawn different things, so I was going to call it MC Ghost 1, but you might not have a ghost, you might have a face or an alien or a robot or a cat, so Sprite 1 will be fine. MC Sprite 1. Okay, well that turned it into a symbol. I see it in my library. If I want to go back and edit it, I can easily edit it in the library but it needs then an instance name so that we can interact with it in ActionScript. This is the part where we will then 
name it as what more of obviously it is. So here's where I'll call mine MC Ghost One. If you call it, you know, MC Cat One or whatever, that's fine. Just keep track of your code where yours is different. Okay, so the idea here is that the ghost is going to run around the screen and you're going to need to tap it and get points. So let's say we'll start it off on the left side of the screen. On frame one, it's going to start somewhere on the left side. Start it outside of the canvas so that the person doesn't know where it's coming from more advanced things that we can do later is that it would start randomly from different parts of the screen. Right now we'll keep it simple. But it'll go from frame, it'll, it'll, let's say we want this to take four seconds to get across the screen. So notice on frame 96 in our layer one, we press F6, that copies the frame. And then I'm going to move it to the right somewhere down here, off of the screen. So in between frames 1 and 96, you're going to right click uh, Create uh, Motion Tween. Let me see here, not motion tween, sorry, classic tween. Actually, wait a minute, let's do it better. Let's do it the more modern way. Um, yeah, let's do this instead. Let's undo that, actually. Let's take it back so that it's just the very first frame. Let's do it this way. I got a better idea. So just undo that so that it's the first frame. We can use the more modern Adobe uh, Animate Motion tweens to kind of make cool motion of it going all over the screen. So instead, we'll do it this way. On frame 96, press F5 to, um, to uh, extend the frames from frame 1 to 95, 96. On frame 96, on frame 96, move the ghost over to the right side. Wait a minute, what am I missing here? Um, you do it first. Yeah, you do it. Yeah, that's that's right. Okay. Before we move it, let's do the right click, then the motion tween. So on frame one, we'll create the motion tween. Then on frame 96, move the little ghost over. So see, now it's going to move from frame one to 96 in a really obvious line. Well, here's the part where you can then make it do cool things. Let's say if I go to frame 10, at frame 10, I'm going to have the ghost down here. At frame 25, I'm going to have him jump way up here. At frame 47, whatever, down here. So I'm just saying here now with a motion tween, you can make it go in a zigzag pattern to different places. And then now instead of it just going directly, it's going to go like this, like this, like this. And then imagine you've got different, uh, imagine you've got different uh, ghosts all over the place. So you'll be able to really make it go. And then you can even grab the, the lines and instead of straight lines, they're going to be curved lines. So obviously we would want, well, I want it to rotate, and I want its eyes to blink, and I want it to make noise. We'll, we'll get to that. 
but for the moment just make this little guy run all over the place. In about four seconds it runs around. That's using a motion tween. Uh, so for four seconds we have this ability to place different keyframes for it to run around. After it runs over there, I then I want it to um, to start again, another wave of the ghost running again. Obviously, I would want it to come from a different part of the screen and be really tricky. We're not going to get there just yet for today. I just want it to, to start again. Start from the left, go to the right again. I want it to loop. I want this action happening to loop. <clears throat> so let's go to our uh, action script frame one here. And now actually the stop command is not helping us because if I were to click start to play it would go to frame one uh, scene level one and it would stop right here. It wouldn't even run around. So we don't actually want to stop command right here. We, want, we do want it to animate. Now there's something to animate. So with a stop command, no animation. We could delete that command if we want, but commenting out a command deactivates it. And the value of that is that sometimes I want to reuse the command, but I don't want to delete it, and I don't, rem I don't want to delete it and forget what I wrote. So commenting your code is helpful too. Okay, so it's going to animate, it's going to run around to frame 96, and then it's going to go to the boss scene. No, I want it to come back to frame 1 of this scene. So let's go to frame 96 of your actions layer and press F7 for a new blank keyframe. I want a brand new command here. When, when uh, the game gets to frame one of this scene, it's going to start to animate. It's going to get to 96. I want it to go back to the beginning and animate again. So we can very easily do here, go to, and capital A, play. Well, we saw this before. But when we saw it before, it was to move us from one scene to another scene. And we saw that the code was longer. Here, it's going to be very simple, because within this scene, we want it to go back to the beginning. So back to the beginning of this scene would be 1. The pop-up that happens here tells us when you use go to and play, you want to, you want to write a frame number, comma, the name of the scene. Well, we can just very simply just write the frame number and then end it. That's it. I don't need to say the name of the scene. I'm going to stay in the current scene, loop back to the beginning. So loop us back to frame one asterisk of this scene. Therefore, our code is simpler than movie clip this root dot go to and play frame 1, name of the scene, scene x99, semicolon. Using movie clip, this root, go to and play one, scene, whatever. If we use the long one, it would still work. 
It's way too much code. This works the same, so we're doing this short one. Now I put the asterisk here because actually, because I already know what's going to happen, we want this to be on frame 2. We're not going to get to it today, but this is going to loop and loop and loop and loop and loop forever, which for the moment, it's fine. But when it works for real, I want it to loop on a timer. I want to give the person 30 seconds. Tap them as many times as you can in 30 seconds. There's more coming at you. You've got 10 seconds left. Keep tapping, keep tapping. We're going to have a timer. Well, the timer is going to get activated on frame 1 of this scene. And therefore, if we say go back to frame 1, it's going to start the timer back to full time. I want to start on frame 2 when the timer has already started. So for the moment, it, just trust me on it. It'll make sense once we do it next time. But we're going to loop back to frame 2 to keep the, the animation going. Let's um, save it and test it. Let's see if you get your your buttons working. Let's see if you get any error messages. Um, I, I, haven't get in, I haven't gotten any popping up errors here to, to do some debugging, humble brag. So, um, you know, whenever you get any errors, look at that error panel, double click it, and it'll tell you here's your line with an error. I haven't gotten any of those to show you, but, okay, here's mine so far. So it came up. I know help works, but just it's a good idea to test it one more time. Go back to home, homeworks, go to start. Go to my start. Same thing happened to you? Okay, well, what am I missing here? Maybe I misspelled something. Go is not working. Hmm, well, okay, I spoke too soon. I, sometimes I do make mistakes, so let me see what my mistake is. Let's see here. The way I would troubleshoot this. Did anyone else get that issue? Okay, so let me confirm here. Um, the way I would... The way I would troubleshoot this. Yours is working, Shelly? Okay, cool. Let's see, btn start add event listener touch event dot touch tab function go level one. The way I would troubleshoot this a bit is if I select that and copy it and paste it here. Oh, I know why. I forgot to fill in the rest right here. So this is the part up here. When I created function go help, this function is going to work on a touch event. I forgot to say this function is going to work on a touch event, so it ignored it. So I forgot to do that. <laughs> so let me try that again. So that one, see, that's a kind of an error right there that there was no pop up to tell me there was an error. I didn't get anything that was telling me there was an error. So those are really hard to fix, unfortunately. So you saw the way I did it. I just went back to the last code that I wrote, and then I was like, logically, this is what should happen. Let me look at my code. Oh, I saw that I didn't write it completely. So I'll help you right now in a moment, Katya, but let me just check mine works here, and then I'll go right over there. Uh, that'd be a good idea, too. Yes. Yes, I would. So again, if your code works before, just do what it did before, and yes, I need some caffeine. I'm missing things. All right, so with void, let me try that one more time. If my computer behaves. so my device doesn't want to be recognized that's okay then um, it probably works um, when you ran it on yours uh, raise your hand if it worked okay that's good enough for me so here's what we'll do uh, this is as far as I want to take it for the moment because we covered a lot of little things setting up our 
project, plugging in the device, writing some code, getting used to writing the code, writing it properly, debugging it a bit. The way this will work is, well, I'll end at the moment. We'll do some lab time now until 4, if you'd like to practice some of this. I'm going to put my version of the code that I've gotten up to this point into the network folder, if you'd like a copy. I'm also going to put a copy of my code on Canvas, so you can get it there. Uh, and this is how, then, on the next class we're going to go. This game actually will come together a lot faster than you think. The, the time that'll take the longer is your own graphics, your own sound. Um, so general questions on what we talked about today. I'll do individual help in a moment, but general questions? All right. Yeah? Do you know approximately when our games can be due? Looking at the calendar, we're going to do then a lecture on uh, 11. We'll probably finish the game actually on the 11th at the latest then. Um, even if we don't finish it in person, we'll probably have an online lecture just to tie it together. And it'll probably do, be due the, on the 18th, so a week after this Wednesday, because our class is going to end sooner than we think. We have another game to work with. But we'll see. We'll get a gauge of how the class is going, but probably the 18th. So we have one more week, basically? One more week for this project. Yeah. To pull it together in your own... Yes. Mm -hmm. So when we do this, when we do this homework, um, I noticed that uh, Canvas hadn't updated, so I've got to fix that. But uh, the requirements of this project will be that the code works as we've been doing it together, and then of course your own graphics. So I would recommend right now, if your code works during the lab time until 4, now is the time for you to start to go in and make your button cool and, and design your text nicely and your little sprites well. You know, during the lecture you don't want to do that, you'll fall behind. But during the lab times, that's when you then embellish your, your project. So that's what I would recommend you do. I'll end the lecture at this point. Uh, we'll do some help. I'll put my code in the folder just in case yours doesn't quite work. You can compare it and then we'll go on on Wednesday.